Oh, hello there. I'm Bill Chen. I'm Nima Kung. I'm Van Chan. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Chapter 4, Section 3 of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Ass. Ah. Oh. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Arthur Conan Doyle. Chapter 4, Section 3. I saw no one near my father when I returned. And I have no idea how he came by his injuries. He was not a popular man. Being somewhat cold and forbidding in his manners. But he had. As far as I know. No active enemies. The coroner. Did your father make any statement to you before he died? Witness. He mumbled a few words. But I could only catch some allusion to her at. The coroner. What did you understand by that? Witness. It conveyed no meaning to me. I thought that he was delirious. The coroner. What was the point upon which you and your father had this final quarrel? Witness. I should prefer not to answer. The coroner. I am afraid that I must press it. Witness. It is really impossible for me to tell you. It followed. The coroner. That is for the court to decide case considerably in any future proceedings which may arise. Witness. I must still refuse. The coroner. Father. Witness. It was. Coroner. How was it? Then. That he had heard it before he saw you. And before he even knew that you had returned from Bristol. Witness with considerable confusion. I do not know. A German. And found your father fatally injured. Witness. Nothing definite. The coroner. What do you mean? Witness. I was so disturbed and excited as I rushed out into the open that I could think of nothing except of my father. Granted the left of me. It seemed to me to be something grey in colour. A coat of some sort. Or a plaid perhaps. When I rose from my father I looked round for it. But it was gone. Yes. None. Yes. I see, said I, as I glanced down the column, that the coroner in his concluding remarks was rather severe upon young McCarthy. He calls attention, and with reason, to the discrepancy about his father having signaled him before seeing him. Also to his refusal to give details of his conversation with his father and his singular account of his father's dying words. They are all. As he remarks, Holmes laughs softly to himself and stretched himself out upon the cushion seat. Both you and the coroner have been in some pains, said he, to single out the very strongest points in the young man's favour. To all? Too little. Of the jury, too much. To a rat. And the incident of the vanishing cloth. Well. There. Says it's true. And we shall see whether that hypothesis will lead us. And now, now here is my pocket by charge. Scene of action. We lunch at Swindon. It was nearly four o'clock when we at last 
after passing through the beautiful Stroud Valley and over the broad gleaming Severn, we found ourselves at the pretty little country town of Ross. Alin. Ferret like men. Furtive and sly looking. Was waiting for us upon the platform. His rustic surroundings. I had no difficulty in recognising Lestrade. Or Scotland Yard. For us. I have ordered a courage, said Lestrade as we sat over a cup of tea. I knew your energetic nature. It was very nice and complimentary of you, Holmes answered. Lestrade looked startled. I do not quite follow, he said. How is the gas? 29. I see. No wind. And not a cloud in the sky. I have a cask full of cigarettes here which is smoking. And the sofa is very much superior to the usual country hotel abomination. Lestrade laughed indulgently. You have. No doubt. Already formed your conclusions from the newspapers, he said. The case is as plain as a bike staff. And the more one goes into it, the plainer it becomes. Still. Of course. One can't refuse a lady. And such a very positive one. The. She has heard of you. And would have your opinion. Had not already done. Oil. Bless my soul. Young woman that I have ever seen in my life. Her voice is shining. Her lips parted. A pink flush upon her cheeks. All thought of her natural reserve lost in her overpowering excitement and concern. Well, Whistle. Sherlock Holmes, she cried, glancing from one to the other of us. And finally, with a woman's quick intuition, to be continued.